If you're on the market for a high-end GPU, today your options just got a lot more interesting. AMD has just announced three new GPUs based on their RDNA 2 architecture, and these are direct competitors to the three GPUs that Nvidia has just released uh, quite recently. RDNA 2, for those who don't know, is the same architecture that's shipping with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. We've yet to truly see what the performance of those consoles is like, but the performance has been hyped up quite a bit. It is still 7 nanometer, but AMD are claiming a 50% performance per watt improvement over the last generation RX 5000 series GPUs. They're also claiming up to a 30% clock frequency increase over last gen. That means boost clocks of up to 2.25 gigahertz for their highest tier model that we'll look at in just a minute. Those are some pretty big claims and definitely something that we'll be validating and checking out in the full review. There are a few more features that they've announced, we'll get into those in just a minute, but for now let's just dive right in and take a look at the three new models. Starting at the bottom of the stack, we have the Radeon RX 6800, a $579 GPU that is aimed at being a rough competitor to Nvidia's $500 RTX 3070, which we just reviewed two days ago. Oddly enough, AMD aren't undercutting Nvidia here on price like they usually do while offering similar performance. Instead, they're aiming to bring more performance at a slightly higher cost. What's really interesting interesting here though is the huge 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, but that'll make a bit more sense in just a moment. AMD's own performance charts has the RX 6800 consistently beating the RTX 2080 Ti, which would roughly indicate RTX 3070 performance, but you're also paying $80 more, and at that point you are kind of halfway to an RTX 3080. Next up we have the RX 6800 XT, offering 12 more compute units over the RX 6800, a slightly higher boost clock but with the same amount of video memory and a slightly higher board power. This GPU is aimed to take down the RTX 3080 mainly on price, undercutting it by $50 US. At $649, AMD are claiming that 4K gaming is about equal to the RTX 3080 whilst beating it on both price and total board power. So this is definitely going to be an interesting comparison. Same goes for 1440p gaming where they do look about equal according to AMD. AMD, and then you do have those historically AMD Radeon favored games such as Battlefield 5 and Forza Horizon, which do show a larger 10% difference in favor of the RX 6800 XT. And lastly, we have a flagship RX 6900 XT, and this one's interesting. It's a GPU that has its target locked on Nvidia's RTX 3090. Here we're getting 80 compute units, a boost clock of up to 2250 megahertz, and 128 megabytes of RDNA 2's new Infinity Cache. Total board power here is the same as the 6800 XT, 300 watts, that's 50 watts lower than the RTX 3090, and memory here appears to be the same across all three models, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. The 6900 XT appears to be binned silicon and likely specially tuned in terms of voltage, as AMD are claiming that performance per watt has been extended up to a 65% improvement now as opposed to 50%, which is what the 6800 and 6800 XT claim. In terms of performance, again, we seem to be roughly tying what Nvidia has to offer, but this time at a significantly lower cost, $500 less in this case. Personally though, I'm not really sure what AMD's play here is with the 6900 XT. You don't get more memory or faster memory compared to the much cheaper 6800 XT, and gaming performance looks to be within 15% according to their own numbers. Oddly enough, this does seem to be a gaming focused GPU, which is kind of weird because that's not really what the RTX 3090 is. And there's zero mention by AMD on how these two GPUs compare in creative applications. And on the note of video memory, this is one of the bigger hardware distinctions between AMD's new GPUs and the RTX 3080 and 3090, which use much faster GDDR6X memory. Some games can take advantage of that more than others, and we also see the benefit of that faster memory at higher resolutions, but it'll be interesting to see how much of a distinction there is here. Probably the most interesting new feature to be announced here is the smart access memory. This is the ability for Ryzen 5000 processors to get direct full access to the high-speed VRAM on RX 6000 GPUs. This seems to be like the big reason that even the RX 6800 is packed with 16 gigabytes of total VRAM. And honestly, this sounds like an extremely exciting feature, but even AMD's own results look far from promising just yet. 
No doubt though, this will be really interesting to test out. And as the new Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 will take advantage of ray tracing in games, that will be brought over to these GPUs as well. It'll be really interesting to see how good the implementation here is by AMD, seeing as this has been a major focus by Nvidia that has really been only worth enabling in a handful of games recently. Mostly though, it's Nvidia's DLSS that AMD has to compete with. So some huge announcements here from AMD. The Radeon 6800 and 6800 XT are said to be on shelves on November 18th, with the 6900 XT coming out a couple of weeks later, December 8th. And one last thing that I will mention before we close off, AMD doesn't really seem to be interested in competing with Nvidia in GPU performance other than gaming. So if you use your GPU for things other than gaming, such as 3D modeling, video editing, 3D rendering, streaming, screen capture, and a handful of other things, those are going to be much better on an NVIDIA GPU, or at least possible on an NVIDIA GPU. Streaming on a GPU, for example, is really only possible with NVIDIA's NVENC. So for engineers, game developers, content creators, and students, you'll definitely want to keep that in mind. Although AMD are undercutting the price of, say, the RTX 3080 by $50 while offering similar performance, I have to ask whether that is enough. Definitely though, if you are just a gamer and you don't leverage your GPU for anything else that's more than enough to go with AMD but I do really want to see AMD offering more potential with their GPU or at the end of the day maybe that doesn't matter at all and the GPU that you end up going with is the one that's actually in stock so as always a huge thanks for watching stay tuned for the full review and I will see you all in the next one